Welcome to HSBN and Christ Mentored Ministries. I'm Pastor Timothy, and my guest tonight is Prophet Michael. Michael, we're glad to have you here. The Thank you. topic tonight is a life worth living. We're going to be going from Mark 14, verses 3 through 9. How will you be remembered? What are you living for? What is worth Christ dying for? The only way to live a life worth remembering is to live for the things that matter to God. Mark 14, 3 tells us, And be, being in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came having an alabaster flask of very costly oil of spike, spike nard. Then she broke the flask and poured it on his head. You might ask, you're, you might ask yourself, have I done such a thing to bless the Lord? Matthew 25, 40 tells us, And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, In as much as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. Prophet Michael, what does that mean to you? Well, um, what that means to me is is that when, when, whenever we uh, touch or reach into another person's life um, that uh, is in Christ, um, it uh, it is completely about uh, uh, a person helping or being there for the believer, for the one who uh, is in need at that time. It could be um, a number of situations that um, that a person could be involved or faced with, but the main the main thing is that um, that as you're doing these things for um, the people of God and as you're serving another person, you're actually doing it for Christ, which is uh, one of the greatest honors and gifts that a person can do. Amen. Amen. 100 years from now, will it make a difference that we're alive? Are the things that I or you or the audience are doing in our lives pleasing to God? Are we walking in faith? Are we giving praises to the Lord? Are we in His Word daily? Are we on our knees praying, having conversation with God every day? Are the things we're living for worth Jesus dying for? Prophet Mike, can you answer that as far as your personal life is concerned and give testimony? Yes, absolutely. The, uh, the amazing thing when you walk with the Lord and you're walking after His Spirit and you're following His plan, then you're you're actually um, organically uh, doing things that are actually pleasing um, uh, to the Lord and, and bearing fruit. And the amazing thing about this is that um, uh, the Lord He's actually laying out a pathway for us to actually bear that fruit and to uh, to be. Um, a, a blessing and, and a help and an encouragement to others and to serve others and to love others. And so, uh, so yeah, that, that to me is uh, really important. Um, it, and you, you had said in, in my personal experience, I really see that, um, that all of the opportunities that I've experienced have been because the Lord has, has just said, hey, Go, go be kind to this person or go say this to, to, to uh, an individual. Um, give this person uh, your time. And by doing that, 
there's been tremendous uh, open doors for, for people to get touched and reached, encouraged and strengthened. And as we do that, um, as we engage uh, the presence of God uh, in, in our daily walk, in our daily life, as we pay attention to, to who's around us and what the needs are around us, then we actually will, uh, will be vessels uh, to walk out these things that, that Jesus intended for us to walk in. Amen. We're talking about walking in things of the Lord. Can you give us an exam a recent example of a prophecy that you have given to somebody? Uh, yes, um, there was a uh, colleague of ours that um, that he he was actually um, he had written some books, and what the Lord was showing me is that uh, he needed encouragement to actually um, for his path to to do check ends with the Lord as far as his theological stance. And because some of the things that, that we uh, have received in the Christian uh, faith and, and uh, traditionally, some of those things don't line up with the heart of God. And so um, what the Lord was telling me to, to re reveal to him is to do check-ins. Because as ministers, we're, we're to reveal, according to the Hebrew, a, a priest or minister reveals the heart of the yes. And so we're actually looking for the heart of God behind what he said in his word. Because everything God said, there's an intention behind it. There's a purpose behind it. And everything he says, every time is perfect. There isn't anything that comes out of the mouth of God that isn't absolutely right, true, and perfect every single time. Amen. Amen. Oh, the most sacred place you could be at is at the feet of Jesus. Jesus was impressed with the actions of Mary, which is the lady that we're talking about in the passage that poured the oil on him. Being at his feet and pour, pouring the oil on him, that he gave us some secrets to living a life worth remembering. The first one is she did what she could do. You are not expected to be on the air like we are. You're not expected to maybe be standing behind a pulpit in some church, but you are. God does expect you to do what you're capable of doing. That could be sweeping the, the church out. That could be praying for people. But you do what you're capable of doing, and this is what she did. This is what Mary did. You're not expected to, you know, do what you cannot do. Just do what you can do. We don't have to be super achievers. We don't have to be incredibly talented. Just do what we can do. And this is what Mary did when she poured the oil on Jesus. She did what she could do. The second thing she did, she did it in the face of, of criticism. Prophet Michael, how many times in your ministry as a prophet have you done what you do in the face of criticism? I've experienced that uh, at, at different times. Sometimes it's been uh, where I've had a word for a leader and, uh, and there were people standing by that actually were sneering at it as I was giving the word. And uh, there was an, a, a situation where I was giving a word to a, a pastor that had been uh, divided uh, from another large church. And what God was showing me is that uh, within, uh, within that season of time, within a few months, that he would be reconciled with that pastor. And the, this previous church was actually... Uh, you know, they were teaching that this pastor was out of the will of God. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was very, very, you know, they were teaching this in the Bible college that they had. And, and what the Lord was wanting to do was restore that relationship. 
And so this pastor went uh, as in, he was invited to go to, uh, it was like a general uh, uh, assembly that they were having. Um, there, you know, they were inviting people from all over um, to be present. So they, they invited this um, pastor who had, who had been uh, estranged from the church. And uh, he had started his, tr- his own church in another place. Okay. So he went back, and what happened was um, this, the senior pastor steps up uh, of the big church, steps up to the podium and said he wanted to invite his son up, that this is my son. He, he received him, and they were reconciled. And it was a huge, huge shift. Wow, that's fantastic. So when God tells us to do something, there will be critics. There will be people who will cut you down. There will be people who will not appreciate the change Jesus made in your life. The only way you can live a life worth remembering is to not allow the critics to stop you. So how do we do that? How do we keep the critics from stopping us from doing God's will? I would say that uh, the, the main thing is to focus on how the Spirit of God is leading you and stay focused on that. And, um, and pay attention to your circumstance uh, and who's around because... Uh, you know, if there is opposition, you know, we're to be uh, as, as, as sharp as uh, snakes and, and uh, gentle as doves. And so, you know, so we, we, need to, we need to be real sensitive to our environment. And, uh, and you know, with that, um, we're able to, uh, you know, to, to navigate through it. And the Spirit of God will sometimes say, you know, how to navigate through these situations. Amen. Amen. So. Well, the third thing that she did is she did it on time. If you want to live a life worth living, remembering, you have to do what God has called you to do on time. So when they're talking about doing it on time, are they talking about our time? Or are they talking about doing it in God's time? Absolutely, in God's time, uh, you know, the in Proverbs it says that a word aptly spoken is like apples in settings of gold, and so, uh, you know, it's so important to give the word or give a message or do the action right on time because that's when God is is accomplishing His purpose, and we're partnered with God, so. When we accomplish His purposes and we're led by His Spirit in that way, uh, you know that that is uh, you know it's really important to be sensitive to the Lord as far as just timing because sometimes a lot of times we get a prophecy or we hear a word and we want to jump on it right away. Well, what if it's a week, two weeks, a month, five years, ten years? You know, you never know what. Uh, what the timing of God is, it, um, it has to be sought out because for each situation, each individual is very important to God. So he wants to be able to work in e- each of our lives individually and specifically. And so it's, it's, it's part of our quest as we're seeking after God. Amen. What has God called you to do? Is it to feed the hungry? Maybe. Is it to clothe the poor? Maybe. Is it to visit those in prison? Maybe. Is it to care for the widows and orphans? Most assuredly. First Timothy 5.3 Honor widows who are really widows, but if any widow has children or grandchildren, let them first learn to show pity at home 
and to repay their parents for this is good and acceptable before God. So how is how is that good and acceptable before God for the children to care for their parents or grandparents? I think that's uh, absolutely vital. Um, we in the church need to do everything we can to to take care of our families, to take care of those who are aging, uh, those who have uh, chronic illness or or a disability. It's so important for us to do that and not to necessarily run and dump it onto our church or our pastors who um, may be overloaded, you know, with with so much that they're dealing with, um, carrying, you know, a hundred to a thousand different people's lives, you know, on their shoulders. So it's really important for the 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 real desperate issues uh, to come forward. Um, in the church and in in that setting, so that the pastor can uh, determine what cases need to be handled and, and what priority. Amen. The fourth point is she did it out of brokenness. God is not looking for the perfect or the strong. He is looking for the broken who can pour forth God's love. Matthew 9.13 tells us, But go and learn what he, this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice, for I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. God does not need your strength. He needs your weakness. God does not need you fixed. He needs you broken. God does not need you to have everything right. He will take you with everything wrong. He strengthens you and helps you. And now, out of the brokenness, flows the love of God and compassion because you have been there and have walked through brokenness in your own life. Wow. One of the points on that that I could clearly make was the fact that he took me out of prison and lifted me up to where I am at today. That is taking a broke, really taking a broken person in my point of you and lifting him up and bringing him into his grace. Uh, can you relate to anything on that uh, as far as how he's lifted you up and taken you out of brokenness? Yes, absolutely. I, you know, it's interesting that, uh, that God takes the broken and he absolutely, uh, uh, strengthens him, him uh, them with the, with the, his grace. And, you know, it's amazing to me how when I look back, you know, I've had uh, uh, illness, I've come close to death, I've been in car accidents, I mean, you know, uh, I mean, I could name off uh, so many different things, so many th different heavy uh, trials and losses that, you know, uh, loss of uh, family members um, and the grief that follows, you know, God uses and and strengthens the the broken he partners with us uh, uh, in in our weakness you know it says that he gives us the grace um, and and knowing that we have the grace it, since we know we're forgiven we have the strength to get up and run in this in this race that we're running so amen so it is out of our brokenness out of dying that we live Remain sensitive to the leading and prompting of the Holy Spirit. How do we remain sensitive to the leading and prompting of the Holy Spirit? I believe that it, that comes by just spending time with Him. And it doesn't uh, necessarily always have to be uh, in a closed environment, although, you know, the Lord encouraged 
us to, to go into our rooms and close the door and, and spend time with him, um, which includes reading his word and, and just uh, praying to him, talking with him. Um, but this dialogue that you have with the Lord continues um, as long as you are open and available. Uh, and that doesn't just happen in the four walls of the church or in, in a closed room at your house. It happens everywhere you can. Uh, to be uh, having a mind set on the Lord, the, the Word of God says, is life and peace. And the mind con is, that's controlled by the Spirit has that, the life and the peace. Amen. So with that, are we talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit or just the fact that the Holy Spirit lives within you when you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior? Well, that uh, as soon as someone comes to Christ... They have the, the, the anointing inside of them, which instructs them about all, all things according to 1 John. And so in the process of maturity and development in the Lord, uh, it, you know, the word of God says in Isaiah, it says that they will all know me from the least to the greatest. Amen. And so, yeah, I, I, I believe that... Um, as, as each person goes through each phase of growth and maturity in the Lord, um, that, uh, that each one gets to know God's voice and it becomes more and more uh, apparent to, the, to each individual. Amen. Amen. So, uh, as a prophet, I know you usually have a special word for somebody out in the audience. Uh, can you speak that word uh, at this point? Yes. Um, I just want to say that, uh, you know, as you're pursuing and, and looking to God, uh, maybe you don't know the Lord, and I want to address that first. Um, you can know Him, and it's as simple as receiving what He did for you on the cross. And receiving salvation is just that easy. You, you, uh, you say, Jesus, you know, come into my heart, come into my life. I accept what you did on the cross. Uh, I, I ask that you would forgive me of, of my sin, and, and the Lord wipes it away. And, um, and so from, from that, then, you know, God begins... Uh, to take you on a journey, uh, a new walk uh, with him. And so when you're looking to the Lord and you're, you're actually, you know, there, there are many places you can be on the mountain. Uh, there are many out there who are in different levels. Just continue to, to stand your ground in the Lord and, and uh, bond and, and bind with people that are of like mind and like heart. Uh, f you know, if you're needing t uh, questions answered and things like that, go to someone who is, is seasoned and has been in the walk uh, with the Lord for a while and hang out with them. You know, you'll begin to emulate the things that they're doing in their life and you'll find strength. Amen. So... To live a life worth remembering is to live a life in Christ. To live a life holy, which means to pray. It means to be in the Word daily so that you can learn what God wants you to do. The Holy Bible is a guide. It's a road map to your life. You need to be in it each and every day to learn how to walk a life worth remembering. So what legacy are you leaving your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren? Are you leaving them a legacy of knowing Christ as their Lord and Savior? That's the greatest legacy you could leave. It's not money. It's not property. It's teaching them to know Christ and to walk 
that life worth remembering themselves. So we may always remember only one life to live soon will be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Prophet Michael, will you pray us out? Yes, absolutely. Well, Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for everyone who's watching. And I ask, Lord, that you would just touch each person right where they're at. Uh, for those who have accepted Christ, your, your sins are gone. They, they are removed as far as the east is from the west. And those of you who are believers, just understand that you are forgiven. Your sins are gone. And when Jesus looks at you, he sees no record of sin. So I just wanted to leave this encouragement with you as, as I'm going to pray us out. Uh, so Heavenly Father, thank you for everyone who's watching. I pray that you would fall upon the people, touch them, lift them, and in, uh, encourage and strengthen them. And we just thank you so much for everyone who's watching. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, this is a, has been HSBN and Christ Mentored Ministry. I'm Pastor Tim, and again, my special guest today has been Prophet Michael. We wish each and every one of you a blessed day. God bless. The preceding program was brought to you by the Holy Spirit Broadcasting Network, HSBN Television.